think you will all agree, has done some tremendous work in making licensing much more easy, uh, and make, you know, and make, make, going to you know, e, e, e governance, putting a lot of things online, uh, combining several 18 forms of licensing into one, into making a composite form, uh, uh, you know, giving the self-certification rights, not just for our own age and birth certificate, etc., but even to uh, boiler inspection so that you can get third party. I can go on and then and there is, but so, short point, yes, there has been a significant improvement in ease of doing business, recognized by the World Bank, but much more needs to be done if you want to take the industry forward. The third one, insolvency and bankruptcy code, again, will be, it's, it's, a, it's a complete game changer. You know, there is, for, the, for, for seven decades now, six decades now, unfortunately, the Indian entrepreneur has believed that the entire downside risk is that for the public sector or commercial banks to bear. I mean, there is, it's, no, it's, not, it's not hidden from anybody that, you know, the, the projects have been always gold-plated. Within the first two years, or sometimes people tell me, even before a project started, you know, the, the entrepreneur will withdraw his equity, will be able to take his equity out so that the entire upside, downside risk is left to the banks, and, left, and the banks meaning, therefore, the taxpayers, and only the upside risk being borne by the, by, by the private entrepreneur. That now needs to change. By the way, this, is, this had happened for 70 years in a so-called socialist economy. You know, that, that the private sector, the private entrepreneurs, was just laughing their way to the bank. Whatever they did, they would never be held accountable. They were never, as, as, the, as, 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 as the saying went in India, the business always suffered, the businessmen never suffered in our country. Now that's, that's changing, that's beginning to change. They are being forced to take haircuts of 60, 70 percent. And this will begin a completely new era, if you like, of Indian capitalism as we go forward. And that's what fits my hope. And that's where I, that one of the reasons for which I say that you are at the cusp of a, of a massive change as we go forward. I've already mentioned the new monetary policy framework. The autonomy of the RBI is now guaranteed. I just wish that this autonomy is not taken so seriously that RBI doesn't consider itself to be a the member of the team, and I think it will dawn upon them as they mature that it is a it is a teamwork which is a macroeconomic policy making uh, that is required between RBI, the North Block, and perhaps uh, the Niti Aayog put together, which can which can deliver a much better macroeconomic policy framework as we go forward. The real estate regulatory authority uh, is again something uh, which I think was long in coming, hadn't happened so far, but for the first time again. Builders can't get away with, 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 with crime and criminal uh, you know, neglect of the people who had paid for them. And you can see this happening in many places, and therefore, as a result of which, for the first time, you've got good builders now entering the affordable housing market because they are letting go of the speculative demand which, was, which had arisen and which had driven the middle class and the high income variety, variety of housing so far. The other five, uh, are, as you can see, our infrastructure creation, uh, the, the, the rate of uh, speed, the speed of road construction having risen from about 12 uh, to 25 kilometers already. Uh, you've got uh, uh, the formalization of the economy. I don't know how many of you uh, were thrilled, but I was thrilled and I was completely supported uh, demonetization uh, that the government took because yes, it has not converted all black into white, that is true, but you will agree that a lot of black, in fact, all black has been converted to gray at least. 18 and a half million accounts with three and a half crores of average holdings now sitting in the banks for CBDT to get to them. Now that's 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 gray money. It's not black. And you and you can you can you can ask you can ask all your FFCG you know producers and traders and you can ask the jewelers and you can ask all the you know the, 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 the sellers of Mercedes and so on. They'll tell you that luxury demand has been affected. And that's because, you know, the, the, the black economy is not thriving as much. Anybody who has told me, and, I, and, I, and I, anybody who has told me that this was a bad measure is somebody, I think, who doesn't recognize that the great, 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 great majority of Indians prefer and, and support hard work incomes rather than those uh, who have earned their money in all sorts of ways and strut about as if they owned the society, which is what had happened in the last 30 years or so. The next, again, I think you will agree, the jam and the direct benefits transfers. You know, the Jandhan account, opening 300 million accounts in less than four years, is, is, is incredible. 
also is a also is a comment on what had remained to be done in the last 60 years. How was it that despite the nationalization of our banks since 1969, 300 million people didn't have a bank account for themselves? About 80 percent or 78 percent of women were left by, you know, without accounts. But nonetheless, this has been achieved, and now you have saved 82,000 crore by removing fraud beneficiaries from one place after the other, one place after the other. And I think there's a, there's a wonderful article today, uh, I, I think in the Times of India, by Vinod Khosla, the former, the founder of Sun Microsystems and, you know, and one of the leading, you know, our leading inventors and entrepreneurs who says that it is time that we stop discussing Aadhaar and permitting it, permitting it to be used for private, you know, uh, uh, private initiative so that we can create electronic wallets for each one of us. Uh, you know, and, and, and that's the that's the strength of Aadhaar that we have created. 1.18 billion uh, people now on the cloud, so that you can open bank account in about you know three minutes flat, and you can and you can have all sorts of you know uh, verifications uh, you know for for, for 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 several schemes that we've done. I, the number is in hundreds. I don't, you know that the schemes that have been transferred to Jam, but this makes for a this makes for this is the basis for continuing with your transfer incomes, continuing with your subsidies, which are a must in a capitalist economy. And I repeat, subsidies are a must in a capitalist economy because those who are left out or those who start with the lower in, you know, initial endowments must be helped by either free education or free health and free rations to the extent possible. But they should not, be, they should not result in a whole leakage which only feeds the intermediaries and, and, and doesn't the benefit don't reach the Rajiv Gandhi statement of 15 paise of a rupee reaching the beneficiaries, I, I, I emphasize to you, I, I assert to you, ladies and gentlemen, nothing had been done so far, despite that man having made that statement until we took to jam on the basis of Jandhan Adhar and mobile and mobility schemes. And this is why, again, I find this is which will make the public expenditure much more efficient going forward. So on the one hand, you will have rising fiscal space because of the buoyancy of the tax revenues through GST and CBDT. And then if you can have more efficient public expenditure, then again it makes for a big cusp, a big change, a big paradigm shift, if, including if we can improve upon the accountability of public expenditure as Niti Aayog is charged to do, uh, you know, with a three monthly quarterly review of our infrastructure ministry directly with the Prime Minister. The bank reforms, and I, I leave the bank reforms and I can come back to them later, but because here again, lots have been done, but much more needs to be done. Actually, that's, that's the fact of the matter. But the last one, uh, which is the agricultural reforms, I think uh, some of it has been taken, several schemes have been launched. Again, more needs to be done. The farmer's distress is a reality. The farmer's distress needs to be, it needs to be addressed. But the biggest reform I think was announced it's not a reform in that sense, was in this budget when the finance minister said that he will shift from talking about agricultural production to farmers' incomes. And I think that's the key. For the first time, and Niti Aayog has been charged with this, we are coming up uh, with several options as to how doubling the farmers' income can be made into a reality. And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, with the new technology breakthrough that I have now observed in the last seven months, uh, you know, and, 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 and the kind of marketing space that you still have uncovered and the agro-processing that you still have uncovered with about 30% of our agricultural production being wasted at the moment, only 11% being, you know, being, being processed. I think there is massive scope uh, for agricultural growth and for farmers' income to be developed. So these 10 structural reforms, and there are others that I have not gone into, make, tell me that there is a, so much work that has been done that it's like an iceberg. What you achieve today is only one eighth of what can be achieved. Seven eighth is, you know, below the water, below the below your radar, below the eyesight, below what you can see. But this will come and this will fructify in the years to come, which is what gives me the confidence to say that we are on the cusp of this massive change. Then you got the ten flagship schemes uh, that we're going forward, uh, and um, again some things that for some reason we hadn't done before. You know, such Bharat. Not talk about uh, hygiene, not talk about public hygiene, about toilets, about you know what the women suffered for all these years and decades, etc. I think it was an utter shame. 
you know, and now for the first time, and now, you know, there are people, again, who will give me, who will point out n number of, uh, you know, weaknesses in the Swachh Bharat. You know, they will tell you, know, they'll tell you all sorts of things, and we not go into those. But the fact is today that 82.8% of households at least have toilets. Now, some of them may be using them in storehouses, yes. Some of them may not be using them because there's not, there's not enough water there, yes. But the fact is that 16 states and UTs are now open defecation free. You got at least the necessary condition as, as distinct from the sufficient condition, which we economists always try and, you know, try and distinguish between, for this country to have a bare minimum of, of public hygiene in, in our country and in our rural countryside, which would mean that for the first time, your children will not be open to infections, diarrhea infections, which keep them malnourished. 38.2% of our children being malnourished in this country after seven years of independence, despite all that we have achieved, I think the beginning can be made by something like this. You know, the, the, the sort of, uh, you know, the, the sort of uh, 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 the dirt and squalor and, 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 and the problems that our women folk face in the countryside and our girls' students face with the lack of toilet in the schools, I think, I, I think this is one of the biggest things that has happened, and I hope and, and, and the person in charge in the ministry, Parmeshwar Mayer, I know this guy, and he is so committed to making this a success that in the next five years, when this is a success, the impact of that on preventive, uh, you know, on, 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 on lower mortality, lower morbidity, on better cleanliness could be amazing. So this is, again, the sort of foundational scheme that we've got. Ayushman Bharat, first time ever the poor will be free of the trauma of slipping into a medical emergency and seeing all their assets being sold out. You know, uh, there, are, there are repeated studies, hundreds of studies which tell you, oh, the people slip back into poverty because of medical emergencies. But so far we had done nothing. Now, for the first time, and a lot of work was done in Niti Ayo, and then the bill was drafted there. For the first time, we have a, we have a pledge, we have a, we have an undertaking that 400 million people to 500 million people you know, 40% of our households will be covered by medical insurance, which will give them a cover of five lakh of rupees, you know, per family per year. You know, this is this is incredible. You know, as we go forward, and this will expand. And I have been ar arguing and advocating that we should have covered the entire population, because, ladies and gentlemen, what's happened is that 40% are going to be covered by Ayushman Bharat. Another 12%, I think, are covered by schemes like the CGHS and the in the army medical scheme and then some schemes in the states you know like the yogeshri and you know and, and the others which have karnataka and tamil nadu have already we have about 60 percent nearly being covered by some form of public health insurance when you cover the rest your premium actually falls because the rich have lower levels of morbidity because the rich are better nutrition you know, have better nutrition so but you know, we weren't confident of our ability to execute such a massive scheme and therefore have started off in phases and to cover 40% of the household uh, to begin with. Once completed, once completed, this will see a huge impact on our poverty levels in the economy as we go forward. And we'll also see a massive response in tier two and tier three cities because that is because for the first time the medical providers would know that effective demand exists in those cities and not just in the metros and state capitals where everybody today rushes to. You know, and, and sleep in the corridors or outside on the streets in Ames, as you can see every morning if you go past that, that, that place. This will change. And along with this, what will change is that the government for the first time said that they are also going to put up 150,000 wellness centers, which they are going to manage themselves from the central government and not leave it to the state government. Now, these wellness centers are going to take care of preventive and primary health. So that the, the, the criticism that the entire burden is being shifted uh, to secondary and tertiary health is not, is not going to be uh, well, well founded. When these 150,000 wellness centers begin to operate, with the uh, being manned by not just so-called modern doctors, by Ayush doctors, by people who practice Ayurveda and homeopathy and Yunani medicine, because they're all equal. By the way, just uh, an aside here. China today has 500,000 Chinese traditional medicine clinics. China has integrated completely in the first two years the education, uh, medical education, they've integrated the Chinese system and the modern system together so that both sides know each other and talk to each other. 
we in our country have run down persistently our traditional forms of medicine as if these were all you know just simply you know you know just simply sort of some mumbo jumbo and no no nothing no, so called non scientific i since my childhood have been a beneficiary of these systems and even today i am a beneficiary for them for me to be told by the indian medical association oh you should get ayush doctors on the back door then this will not work etc i think is a real shame as far as i am concerned so we should also try but all of this can be achieved uh, through ayushman bharat and i hope we will see uh, going forward the beti bachao beti padhao scheme again uh, is uh, i hope you will not this the, the, the achievement under the scheme which i am not going to detail will not simply be set aside by one kathua or the other you know and one man muzaffar nagar etc etc these are, those are those are social those are societies evils that we've got those are those are demented people etc whom we should fight all together but beti bachao beti padhao is a real scheme which will keep wells students in the school for a longer time so that their marriage age also gets postponed their child bearing starts later and our and and the, and the, and, the, and, the, and the current uh, the current situation of a drop in female participation rate uh, you know is is reversed after we, as we go forward uh, then you have the digital india this government inherited a grand old grand lot of 4000 square kilo, square 4000 kilometers of optic fiber have been laid, having been laid until 2014 we have now laid the, the, the you know the ministry has now laid i think 240000 uh, meters square kilometers of optic fiber another you know 100 150000 kilometers to go but when i met the minister recently he was quite sure that he would achieve the target before by the end of this year and not by the end of this fiscal year and when that happens when that happens you have 2.5 gram panchayats connected by optic fiber to the internet and to the wide world abroad for the first time in this country because after that you can get wifi into the villages you know from the gram panchayat perhaps for the first time our children will necessary will have access to free information and i think this will be something which will be incredible in terms of being able again a, a, a massive change which is in the making a massive change is in the making already being shown up by the number of people from the rural background who are entering now your covenanted services of ias and i think just yesterday before i was sitting with uh, with ajit uh, anil or ajit mishra uh, who runs the chanakya academy telling me that 400 of his rural based candidates have now got into the you know these the examination success, successfully all that is changing because the availability of information curriculum and everything else to our countryside skill india uh, i would um, uh, you know there are lots of lots of numbers here uh, 11.87 lakh students having been certified in uh, under 2017 18 under the pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana but my my own emphasis has been and i hope we will see this in the coming days on improving and expanding quite radically and quite dramatically the number of apprentices in this country there is already a law the law i think this is a this is a this is a 1967 law then amended in 2011 but which gives only 1500 to those who are from commerce uh, you know social science background and 2500 if you are from an iti background i think this should be doubled if not more and if this is doubled then just like germany and france and japan you can actually train and you know your your young people on jobs for tomorrow so that is what apprentices are, are all about when industry gives you a apprenticeship it is going to give you a, a training in the job for tomorrow and not in a job which often happens under the skill india that by the time you come out the job has actually all disappeared i hope that will change and once that happens as well you will see that a big change comes along the proper pradhan mantri avas yojana uh, for gramin and for urban uh, affairs uh, i you should see the success in the rural in the gramin uh, avas yojana to believe it I, I i'm not now sure of the numbers and i don't have them here the targets of course have been 10 million rural houses to be built by 2019 and 12 million houses to be built by 2020 i am told 10 million means 1 crore and 70 lakh have already been built in the gramin sector 70 lakh have lakh have already been built and i think up to 40 lakh or 38 lakh already occupied and this target is going to be met the gramin the, the urban targets are a bit, bit behind Because of the because of the constraints on land availability, etc. But the good news is that if you talk to anybody like the DLF or the Hiranandani's or the 
or, or the rehejas, they are now all looking at affordable housing schemes uh, to make money and, and looking at that as a, as a commercial venture going forward. So uh, again, a huge the other flagship scheme, the Mudra Yojana. Uh, Ten crores loans have been given so far in the last three and a half years. Six and a half crore loans to new borrowers, 78% to women employees. Now, the criticism that I've heard recently is that a large percentage of these loans are very small under the Shishu Yojana. They've got three, the Shishu, uh, Kishore, and uh, the third one, they've got three categories, uh, Yuvak, I think, but I forget. Yes, that's a, that's a valid criticism, uh, that if you get only 10,000, 20,000, or 30,000 rupees loan, you may not generate employment. But even if we assume, ladies and gentlemen, that of the 10 crore, 100 million loans, even if we assume that 50% did not create employment, even if we assume that 60%, 70% did not create employment, even if 30% did, that means 30 million, 30 million units created at least one or more employment or jobs. Now this is this is not being uh, connected anywhere. I'm I'm trying to say I'm trying to point out the other thing which has been discussed now in the last three or four days about the job and employment situation in India. I think personally, and I said this yesterday on Times Now, that a negative narrative has been purposely built to undermine the you know achievement of this government. And then when Shruti Bhalla says that 15 million jobs were created in 2017-18, you may not agree. But at least Mahesh Vyas this morning has for the first time agreed that there's not a job loss in this country. And said, oh, it's only 1.5 million. Thank you. But at least that negative narrative has to be changed. And I think that is what is needed uh, for us to come together if we want to do this, this, this paradigm shift. The Ujjula Yojana, the Sabhagi Yojana, uh, the India Today has found out that not all villages are electrified. And that's, you know, the, and I think it's on the news in the electronic media. I, I suppose, yes. And the, there, are, there is some misreporting. But the fact is that you are able to find only a few, a dozen of the 18,000 districts, some of which in Arunachal and Manipur required headloads of you know, equipment being carried, etc. But at least we can now say that there is now we are, that we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we have really completed the, the, the village electrification, and the next target must be the electrification of. 40 million households, uh, you know, which are left unelectrified as we go forward, and that's what you will get uh, under Sobhag, uh, you know, in, in the coming years. The aspirational district, and this is where I should end, I suppose, uh, the, on the on talking of the flagship schemes. The, the, just, the, just the initiative, just the thought of having picked 115 most backward districts in this country on the basis of some hard objective criteria. You know, that's where pick them up and then to say, that we will now focus on them to converge all their schemes and bring these 115 up to the national average, I think itself is a, is, is, is a, winning, is a, is a winning measure. I'm sure, and this is where Niti Aayog has been, is, is one of Niti Aayog's main responsibilities to make sure that you know, this, is, this is a success, and I'll be handling it myself. We are ranking these districts you know, as we go, and we 